Nikita Mazepin is perhaps the most disliked driver in the current Formula 1 grid. Half of his haters think he is just there because of the money and is occupying a seat that some other young talented driver deserves more. The other half think his behavior on and off track is proof enough that regardless of how he performs, he does not belong to the highest level of motorsports. But is all this hatred justified? Is Matsupin really as bad as you think he is? Nikita Matsupin has had a bad start to his Formula 1 career so far. Currently in his rookie season, Matsupin and his teammate Schumacher joined Formula 1 after a successful season in Formula 2. But while Schumacher has had an unremarkable season so far, Matsupin's season so far has been memorable for all the wrong reasons. In Bahrain, he spun in the first lap, making one of the worst debuts in Formula 1. In the Emilia-Romagna Grand Prix, he was the only one to have been lapped twice by the race leader. He messed up in qualifying by overtaking fellow drivers and then spinning up ahead, impeding the qualifying laps of others. He also got penalty points for his behavior on track. He ignored blue flags which led to fellow drivers being pissed off. He also angered his teammate in Baku when he tried to defend the position and made a move that put Schumacher in danger. But to really answer how good or bad Matsapin is, you need to understand how his track record has been in the lower divisions. Matsupin started his single-seater career in 2014. The first half of his career, his performance was lackluster to say the least. From MRF Challenge Formula 2000 2014 to Formula 3 in 2017, he did not finish in the top 9 in championship standings even once. In the next 4 years, he finished top 5 in 3 seasons with 2nd position in GP3 series in 2018 and 5th in Formula 2 in 2020. I spoke in one of my earlier videos how it takes Schumacher one full season to get in full grips with the car. But in contrast, Matsupin took almost half a decade to get in grips with single-seater competitions. He definitely will not have the luxury of that much time to get used to a Formula 1 car. Now, let's look at this from another angle. Did Masapin take the seat that some other young, more talented driver deserved more? The other driver who was talked about a lot for being promoted to Formula 1 was Callum Eilert. If junior levels can be relied on, then Eilert has clearly not outperformed, let alone dominated Matsupin consistently. In GP3, Matsupin actually beat Eilert as his teammate. In Formula 2, Eilert in Virtuosi was clearly in a better team than Matsupin who was in high tech. Now, if instead of Matsupin, if Tsunoda had taken up that Haas seat, I pretty much guarantee he is not going to perform that much better than Nikita. Same, I believe, applies to Latifi. It is not to say Matsupin is a great driver. He is definitely not at the same level as some other decent drivers in the grid. And if talent is the main criteria we should take into account, then Hulkenberg should never have been kicked out of Formula 1. The bottom line is, if you think Matsupin does not deserve a seat, there are very few people you could name who deserves that seat more purely based on merit. Now, finally, let's talk about why Matsupin is hated so much by the fans. Matsupin is not disliked because of how bad a driver he is. He is hated because of his attitude. In 2016, he assaulted his fellow driver Callum Eilert while they were both in Formula 3. As a result, he was banned for a race. He has a bad temper and sometimes it is at full display during the races. His driving style is reckless and his maneuvers, specifically the defensive maneuvers, are sometimes very dangerous. The other thing that people dislike is that he is Russian and more importantly son of a billionaire Russian oligarch. Formula 1 fans particularly hate paid drivers. 
Before marzipan, it was Latifi. And before Latifi, it was Stroll. Stroll did not particularly do well in his first season. But look where he is now. I think if we just give marzipan a chance, he might mature into a decent driver in a year or two. Haas has been fully focusing on 2022 cars. So if things go right, we might even see Nikita with a couple of points finishes next season. But for that, we might need to be a bit patient and not be too critical of him yet. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing to the channel if you like to watch similar content. And stay tuned to I Am Formula for everything Formula 1. Until next time, take care and stay safe.